Hello and welcome to another episode of We Are Next. My name is Kevin Peters. I'm your host, and I'm proud today to be joined by Andy C. Andy, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Pretty stoked uh, to be chilling. All right, it's great to meet you. So just to start off, why don't you tell us a bit about who you are, and what you do? My name is Andy Kalonico. I'm from uh, good old Welland, Ontario, Niagara region. What's up? Represent. Uh, yeah, I'm a musician and uh, I play in a band uh, most known as Revive the Rose. Uh, I'm also an insurance broker. <laughs> oh, terrific. <laughs> tell me a bit about Welland, the, uh, the Rose City, and what that city means to you and, and how it's shaped you who you are now. Great community, great people, and uh, I think that really shaped me. And it's it very musically uh, filled, so uh, like lots of arts going on down in Welland. So uh, I was always just kind of uh, filled with that too. So um, it all kind of sandwiched together to make uh, this guy. So love Welland. Let's talk a bit more about your career as a musician. Are you guys signed to a label or are you independently financing your project? So yeah, great question. Uh, at the moment, we are uh, technically unsigned to the world, but we have uh, we have created our own record label. Not per se to take on us. We we put out our last album under it, uh, but more so um, just because we've we've had such a successful, um, I guess, career independently right now uh, as an in up and coming independent band. Um, I've done a lot of hustling to make a lot of the things happen with the boys. And uh, we, we've been lucky to have some people help us out, but there's been times before, you know, we kind of gained more traction where we were kind of on our own in this industry. And like, I didn't know what to do. Like I had to, we had, we kind of had to figure it out ourselves. And I, and I, and there's a lot of talent I see out there, man, that like they got the talent, but they don't really like structure it with the full game plan and business side of things. You know what I mean? And, and they don't really see things that maybe the outside people see in them, you know what I mean? So that's why we kind of made our own label to start giving back to the community as we grow as a band. So we kind of pour our assets into this label and yeah, it's, it's great, man. So right now we're, uh, we're working on um, expanding the Revive the Rose family, but when it comes to Snare Guy Records, which is our label, uh, we're, we're, we're doing that to take in uh, maybe acts that aren't, really kind of at the level even we're at and we're still at a low level but we're kind of helping them kind of establish themselves so that's that's why that label exists yeah, i mean everybody needs a helping hand so that, that's terrific if you're able to do to do that because i'd consider you still fairly early in your career but if you're already seeing yourself as a as a mentor there's some significant value in that oh thanks man i'm, I'm trying my best uh and you know if i hear something good i want to make sure that other people are hearing that too because like it's it's awesome <laughs> uh with the availability of technology any one of us can record music in our basement by ourselves is there still a place for a bunch of friends rocking out in their garage or has the industry switched to highly produced individuals making music something that's really crucial to revive the roses image is our chemistry as best friends you know and and putting all of our musical influences together because we're very different dudes man like we're very similar, but like, you know, we all uh, uh, genre wise come from very different backgrounds. Um, and that's kind of what makes Revive the Rose really special, I'd like to think. So um, if, if you really want to fine tune uh, the, the, a particular sound you're looking for, definitely gathering and, and making it happen, jamming wise, super important. And something I've learned this year as well is co-writing is actually something that artists should really look into with the right people. Um, we had the opportunity to, um, you know, we, we record our demos, we do our part of the bargain, right, as a band, you know, trying to develop a song. But sometimes it just takes an outside brain to hear something too. So uh, we've been very fortunate to work with uh, John Angus McDonald from The Trues. He produced our uh, uh, so three songs we recorded just with him in February before the apocalypse. So um, yeah, and, and, and I would have never imagined these songs sounding like how they do now like it's crazy man so i think they both kind of come hand in hand you kind of need to like make your own vibe because that's the originality to it and then you kind of need maybe uh someone else that that is also kind of like vibing with what you're doing to kind of help you maybe condense it a little and maybe uh move some parts around you know well you kind of segued into what my next question was i'd like to hear more about distribution how do you actually get your music 
out there. If you're able to record something, it's great. But how do you get people to hear it? Um, one definitely hustle it. Uh, that's that's the one. Um, it, many ways, man. Um, thankfully, there's a lot of distribution uh, websites such as CD Baby. Uh, you know, radio stations offer features for bands or any artists. Um, you know, Distro Kid. You name it. There's lots of options out there. Uh, even YouTube, Facebook video. Um, in our in our case, we've been very lucky. Um, you know, uh, we we've gotten to know uh, like stations like 97.7 Hits FM quite well. We were uh, in their rock search contest uh, back in 2016, and um, you know, we escalated from that to like full time airplay, even though we didn't win. Um, and so we kind of took that and ran with it, and we kept hustling that to like other radio stations, being like, "Yo, they're playing us like." You should play us, you know, and then we've just done our best that way. And we've been very lucky. Um, Spotify has like these playlists that they make sometimes that they'll curate. Um, and there's no kind of way to officially get on the playlist unless they just simply like it. And you'll never know until your song comes out day of. So we've actually been really lucky. We, we, we landed in about four playlists total, uh, mainstream playlists that had like over... 300,000 followers on them and like we Amazing. all of a sudden Germany is listening to Welland like it was weird so uh, just hustle man and um, I think I think videos are, are very important too for a release because like uh, it's such an ADD culture I'll say it that way uh, where you kind of need a pop you know people aren't just gonna like listen if they just see like a link like they need like attention grabbing you know what I mean so yeah yeah, I'm glad you mentioned your relationship with Hits FM because that's how I would have first heard of you guys um, when, oh, no way. when they were playing on the radio. Because especially with just the name of your band, you guys are basically cheerleaders for Niagara. And, and, and I think your music speaks directly to the audience. So I think that's, that was a perfect fit. And, and although you guys didn't win, still a, a terrific relationship that you guys have with Hits. Yeah, I know. They've been super kind to us, man. And they've... Uh... It, it was cool. They were able to see something a little more in us that like kind of pushed that to happen. You know what I mean? And uh, mm. we just really tried to emphasize, you know, we came to them with our song nine to five. I'm like, the song's so relatable. Like, it's just like, you know, just doing the grind every day. And uh, you're, you're a lot of your listeners are uh, people working in the trades, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, in the, you know, the guy that blasting in the back of a restaurant kitchen, like, truck driving you name it just doing the grind this song speaks yeah. and they kind of yes, saw sir. that so it was cool i'd like to hear about how you hooked up with the ice dogs to record the song bar down and the video that followed um i it really came to my head i'm like we have this awesome ohl team this in niagara like and we're an awesome band from niagara i'm like we need to like we need to, they got a beautiful arena built for them now like they're 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 going all out and to go all out, you got to do it properly. They need a good song. So I thought, well, we should make them something. So, and I just emailed him saying, hey, like, I kind of used Hits FM at the time as a pitch because we were, like, on the air around then with 9 to 5. So I was like, hey, like, you know, we're from Niagara. We're on the radio right now. Like, I'd love to team up for the new season and make you guys a new song to come out with a bang, you know. And uh, they were all about it. They said, yeah, like, I'm like, can I come meet you guys? And, and so – they invited me for a meeting. I said, we don't have the song yet, but this is our plan. I want to call it Bar Down, and I kind of want to just focus on, like, I don't know. It's just kind of nice, like, uh, kind of like the OHL is kind of like an up-and-coming stage for these hockey players, you know, to enter the NHL, and we're kind of like an up-and-coming band, like, trying to get to the next level, too. So it's kind of like helping each other out, you know what I mean? It's really awesome, building community that way, and um, – yeah, before you know it, we had the song. We sent it to them like maybe two weeks before the season even started. The stars aligned, man. And before you knew it, as soon as um, right, we we dropped a single before Bar Down. It was Moxie, which is what one hundred two point one's uh, Alan Cross uh, shared right off the hop. Uh, so between that hype and then like hockey season, we dropped Bar Down. Like it, it was just nuts. Like it was like everything went according to plan. They had it on the big screen. The Niagara region loved it, and it did so well. Even then, now the Toronto Maple Leafs use it. No way! I didn't know that. Yeah, it's in their official warm-up playlist for 2019 and 2020 season. Oh, so. that's amazing! Yeah, and there's only like 11 songs in this playlist, so it gets played every home game. 
I really appreciate that story because it shows so much more than just being able to play an instrument. It's being able to one, organize a band and, and write songs, but also to be aware of branding and be aware of marketing and being able to put yourself out there and, and put that pitch because the Ice Dogs executive could have just said, no, we're not interested. But you threw yourself out there without even a product yet. And just reaching out for a collaboration is, is really how this amazing things happen. So good for you for, for doing that. And, and I hope that you don't lose that hustle ever. I hope that you keep up that, that motivation. I hope you keep this momentum because it's really amazing and it's inspiring what you can do when you believe in your product and therefore believing in yourself. I really respect and appreciate that. So thank, thank you for man. sharing that. Going back to our, our roots as being Niagara residents, do you have a favorite gear store in the area? Yeah, you know what, man? Uh, I love central music. It's just such a good vibe there. They always yeah. hook you up. Uh, great service, great team over there. Daryl knows what, what the hell he's doing when it comes to fixing guitars. Like, uh, it's a good team. Uh, you know what, man? Uh, I love them, and I love uh, Mike's music a lot, too. Mike Palermo, he's, he's a great guy. Yeah, so we got Central Music on East Main and Welland, and we got Mike's Music in Thorold on Pine Street. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. Well, Andy, this is my opportunity to roll the red carpet for you, my friend. What is next for Andy C? Uh, lots is next, dude. Uh, we have, uh, we've been rolling out our uh, Instagram live show to keep our viewers, uh, you know, busy and whatnot. Uh, it's, a, it's called Sunday Streams with Andy C, and it's just a, a, a talk show. Um, my way of kind of giving back to like people uh, that kind of always support us, you know, I like to bring them on and kind of just shoot the crap with them, you know, see what, see what's going on with them. And yeah, just kind of my way of getting to know people and also uh, giving back at the same time. And uh, also uh, Revive the Rose is planning a lot right now behind the scenes. Uh, we are hoping to maybe get something new out later within the year, if not 2021. Well, that wraps up another episode of We Are Next. Again, I'm your host, Kevin Peters, and I just want to thank you, Andy C., for being with us today. If you'd like to nominate somebody or yourself to be on a future episode, please tag yourself in the comments below. And other than that, make sure you check out Revive the Rose. Andy, thanks again. It was great to meet you. Hey, thanks for having me on, man. Great pleasure uh, talking to you. And uh, yeah, stay safe, my friend.